Medium-sized sedans are making a comeback in 2015, led by a raft of fresh models ready to tempt people away from SUVs and hatchbacks. But there is a future for sedans in mid-sized models that have become increasingly large. We've brought the three latest examples of the breed along to test. The refreshed Mazda 6, the all-new Subaru Liberty, and the all-new Hyundai Sonata. At little over $37,000 plus on-road costs, the Mazda 6 is the most expensive car here, but it has plenty of redeeming features. Hyundai's new Sonata is a little bit cheaper at just under $37,000, bringing a powerful motor and plenty of space to the equation. And the new Subaru Liberty is cheaper still at $35,490, bringing outstanding specifications to the segment. The Hyundai is the real strongman of this group, with a powerful 2.0-litre turbocharged engine producing 180 kilowatts and 350 Nm. Quite strong outputs for a car of this size. The Sonata's new engine is quite a gem, with effortless power and torque that allows it to climb hills, overtake or accelerate away from rest without any effort whatsoever. It's easily the quickest car in our group, but it's let down a little bit by an automatic transmission that's just a tad off the pace. Tucking into the bends, the Sonata has a fairly slow steering rack and not a lot of steering feel, which means that you often find that you need to add more lock when you're cornering and you also don't get quite as good a sensation of what's going on underneath you. The Sonata brings big car ride comfort with settled suspension that ably absorbs bumps, making it the most comfortable car to ride in. But it is let down by a cheap feeling interior with painted plastics that feel a little bit 2005 and it misses out on features such as an electronic handbrake or the availability of active safety equipment that you can find in the Mazda 6 or the Subaru Liberty. The Hyundai is comfortably the largest car in the group and that extends to the rear where there's loads of headroom and legroom, plenty of space to stretch out. The one problem I have with it though is that the front seat backs are made of hard plastic, which can be pretty annoying. The Sonata also has the biggest boot. With 510 litres of storage space and a full-size spare tyre, the Hyundai is the practical pick. On the whole, the Sonata is a very convincing package. It offers great value, an excellent engine and plenty of space for people considering a mid-sized car. This generation Mazda 6 has been among the best in its class for some time. Mazda's updated the car for 2015 with a new look inside and out and a couple of little tweaks designed to make the car more appealing. It has the same 2.5 litre, 138 kilowatt and 250 Nm engine as before, returning outstanding fuel economy of 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres. That's a great figure, but it's one that we've struggled to match. The car's returned around 8.5 litres per 100 in testing here, which is not ideal, if, particularly if you're expecting the car to do mid sixes. Conversely, the least efficient car in the group, the Hyundai Sonata, with an official fuel figure of 9.2 litres per 100, is returning around 9.5. So what you see is what you get with that car. Whereas here, you've got a fuel figure that you may struggle to match in everyday driving. Mazda has an advantage in that its car is quite light. It's more than 100 kilos lighter than the Liberty and 200 kilos lighter than the Sonata, which really plays out on the road. The Sixers engine and transmission put it in the middle of the road for this trio. It's not tardy, but it's also not too quick. It's a car that's been designed with efficiency in mind rather than exhilaration, and that's no bad thing for this class of vehicle. This generation of Mazda 6 has been a dynamic darling of the mid-sized car class, and that hasn't changed with the new model. It's quite accomplished on the road with predictable progressive steer, well-weighted brakes, and dependable suspension that mean you can really lean on it and enjoy it as a driver. Now, this car has one of the best cabins in its class with a driving position that puts you nice and low tucked into the car. You've got a great sporty steering wheel with paddles, some cool chocolate brown effects throughout the cabin, and a nice new touch screen that's controlled by remote buttons down here as well. You get a bit of a feel similar to an Audi or a BMW. Like the Hyundai, the Mazda 6 is a fairly large car, but it doesn't use its space quite as efficiently. Legroom is on par with the much smaller Liberty, and the headroom is quite a bit less thanks to a swooping roofline. Mazda's 506 litre boot is impressive on paper, though the 6 is let down by a space saver spare tyre, the only one here. Mazda has an optional safety pack that brings autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring and cross traffic alert systems for $1260 but we'd like to see that fitted as standard. We took sound readings from all three cars and found that the Mazda 6 is consistently the noisiest car here. Now the brand says it cut road noise in the new model by up to 25%, but we also did a back-to-back -back test with the previous model that really put that in doubt. The Mazda 6 is still a great car. When I drove it for the first time at its Australian launch a few weeks ago, I questioned whether Mazda had really done enough to keep it at the pointy end of the mid-car segment. Now this is a very competitive class of car, and the Mazda 6 remains one of the best examples you can get. As for whether it's still number one, I'm really not sure about that anymore. They say good things can come in small packages, and that's certainly the case with the Subaru Liberty. 
It's the most compact car of our trio. The clever packaging means that it's got just as much room in the back as the Mazda 6. The Japanese manufacturer gave its landmark sedan some serious price cuts ahead of this model's launch in December. The top of the line six cylinder model is now $14,000 cheaper, whereas this 2.5 litre premium car that we're driving is four grand cheaper than it was just six months ago. You might say Subaru lost its way with the previous generation Liberty. It's a car that was a little bit off the pace, a little bit ugly, not a driver's car, and something that just generally wasn't quite on par with some very serious rivals in the medium car segment. But that has changed with this car here. The Liberty has well-weighted, accurate steering and confidence-inspiring grip that really do make it quite a joy in the corners. The Mazda 6 for a long time was the driver's pick in its class, but I think Subaru has gone some way to wrestling that title back, particularly after the last model, which was a little bit big and flabby and not so great in the bends. This car has a significant ace up its sleeve in what Subaru calls eyesight. It's a suite of active safety features mounted up here by the rear vision mirror that combines excellent technology such as active cruise control, lane departure warnings and autonomous emergency braking to basically prevent you from having a crash. Without first-hand experience, it can be difficult to appreciate the value of active safety features such as autonomous emergency braking. Now I've been to a few demonstrations for the technology and believe me, it's a feature that really should factor when you're shopping for a new car. There are circumstances in which human reactions can't quite match what technology is capable of. Subaru's outstanding level of standard specification doesn't finish there. This is the only car here fitted as standard with a sunroof and power memory seats and power seats for the passenger as well. All great features to have. The Liberty's interior is also much nicer than before with some contrasting material. We've got some piano black and some satin silver finishing here, as well as a really cool grained aluminium-like texture throughout the cabin that looks pretty funky to me. The Subaru is the smallest car here, but there's plenty of room in the back. It's a lot of space for taller people to have a bit of headroom, and the front seats are sculpted away nicely so that there's somewhere to put your legs. The Liberty's boot is the smallest here at 493 litres, though it does have an 18-inch full-size spare wheel that helps its case on the practicality front. These cars are excellent examples of the breed, but there are more on the way, including a new Ford Mondeo, Volkswagen Passat and Toyota Camry that all threaten to be the best in class. We'll see how those compare when they arrive, but for now, our winner is the Subaru Liberty. With outstanding value, strong safety credentials and excellent road holding, the new Subaru Liberty is very hard to beat.